class 6 is about the planning. It has two subclasses that is class 6.1 which is actions to address risks and opportunities and subclass 6.2 which is OHS objectives and planning to achieve them. Under subclass 6.1 there are further four subclasses which are as follows. Class 6.1.1 is a general class related to the planning for actions to address the risks and opportunities. It requires that organization must consider their context that is risk profile, the needs and expectation of workers and other interested parties and the scope of the OHS management system when they are determining the risks and opportunities that may influence the performance of their OHS management system or its intended outcomes. The organization must maintain the documented information for the risks and opportunities and the actions which have been taken to minimize the risk and exploit those opportunities. Class 6.1.2.1 requires that the organization shall establish, implement and maintain a process for proactive hazard identification on an ongoing basis. The process of hazard identification shall consider all those activities which may cause or have caused the creation of hazards or risks. To be sure that the risks are reduced as far as reasonably practicable, the organization must identify the hazards based on the activities mentioned in this clause in addition to any other organization specific activities. Give an example of OHS hazard due to situations occurring in the vicinity of the workplace caused by work related activities under the control of the organization and the situations not controlled by the organization and occurring in the vicinity of the workplace that can cause injury and ill health to person in the workplace. Pause this slide and think of the answer before I explain. The examples for the first situation could be those in the vicinity of the workplace who could be affected by the activities of the organization. For example, a passerby, contractors, or immediate neighbors, or the workers carrying out maintenance at the customer site may create OHS hazards for the customers. The example for second situation could be an excavation activity is going on near the boundary wall of the organization or there is a small chemical manufacturing facility nearby and the airborne toxic chemical may travel to the workplace or there is noise from nearby factory etc. Clause 6.1.2.2 requires that the organization shall establish, implement and maintain a process to assess OHS risks from the identified OHS hazards, other risks which may influence the OHS management system performance. The organization shall need to maintain and retain the documented information regarding the methods and criteria it uses to assess the risks. Give an example of other risks which may influence the performance of OHS management system. Pause this slide and think of the answer before I explain. Other risks apart from the OHS risks include the organization restructuring, workload addition, regulatory changes to OHS requirements, business competition or communication breakdown etc. Class 6.1.2.3 requires that the organization shall establish, implement and maintain a process to assess OHS opportunities to enhance OHS performance, other opportunities for OHS management system improvement. So give an example of OHS opportunities and other opportunities. Pause this slide and think of the answer before I explain. OHS opportunities are third-party audits that identify significant non-conformities which in turn serve as opportunities for improvement or the availability of less hazardous raw materials etc. Other opportunities include the availability of software tools to manage paperless OHS management system or government reducing taxes on certain equipment that may be used as engineering controls. These are just examples. Clause 6.1.3 requires that the organization shall have documented process to identify the applicable legal and other requirements by having the access to the up-to-date requirements, interpret those requirements and how they are applicable to them and comply with those requirements through their systematic procedures within their OHS management system. 
the organization need to maintain and retain the documented information related to legal and other requirements. Give an example of the process how the legal requirements are incorporated into the OHS management system. Pause this slide and think of the answer before I explain. Consider an organization that is manufacturing chemicals and its workers are exposed to airborne chemicals. The regulatory body has recently added a new chemical to its list of carcinogenic and provided the short term and long term exposure limits. The organization shall add this chemical to its existing list of chemicals and will carry out the risk assessment which may result in purchasing the detection equipment as well as implementation and deployment of the control measures for example changing the work pattern of the workers. This is how legal requirements are incorporated in the OHS management system. Clause 6.1.4 relates to the planning actions which shall include the actions to address the risks and opportunities as well as the legal requirements and to prepare for and respond to the foreseeable emergency situations and incorporating these actions through systematic procedure within the OHS management system. Moreover, the organization shall plan how to measure the effectiveness of the planned actions. Clause 6.2.1 specify the features of OHS objectives. The requirement of this clause is that the OHS objective should be consistent with the OHS policy requirements and must be measurable either quantitatively or qualitatively. The OHS objectives can be set at strategic level, tactical and operational levels. Give an example of strategic, tactical and operational OHS objectives each. Pause this slide and think of the answer before I explain. The example of strategic OHS objectives to establish a safety culture in the organization where all employees are committed to following safety procedures and reporting any hazards. Tactical OHS objectives to provide training and education for employees on safe work practices and emergency procedures. Operational OHS objectives Ensure that 100% of equipment and machinery is properly maintained and inspected before use. Give an example of OHS objectives being integrated into business objectives. Pause this slide and think of the answer before I explain. Business objectives are mostly financial, so any OHS objective which creates efficiency in OHS processes shall be considered as integrated with business objective. For example, the OHS training budget can be reduced by switching from external third-party training to internal training or reducing the OHS documentation size without reducing the effectiveness of OHS management system will save productive man hours for the organization. The OHS objectives in both cases are integrated with business objective. Similarly, let's discuss another example. For example, the business objective is to increase productivity and efficiency in the manufacturing process. Integrated OHS objectives will be to reduce the incidence of workplace injuries and illness related to the manufacturing process by implementing safety measures and providing employees training. In this example, the OHS objective is directly related to the business objective of increasing productivity and efficiency. By reducing the incidence of workplace injuries and illness, the organization can reduce downtime due to the worker absence or injuries minimize workers' compensation cost and maintain high level of employee morale and job satisfaction. To achieve this OHS objective, the organization might implement safety protocols such as regular equipment inspections, hazard assessments and safety training for employees as well as providing personal protective equipment and promoting a culture of safety in the workplace. Class 6.2.2 requires that the organization shall determine how the objectives shall be achieved. This includes resource allocation, establishing responsibilities, and setting a monitoring strategy and timeline. The auditors will be looking at the procedure that how this process is carried out and records of previous OHS objectives, for example, what were the objectives and what actions were taken to achieve them. What happens if an organization sets some OHS objectives at strategic level but could not achieve those objectives? Reply from an auditor's perspective. Pause this slide and think about the answer before I explain. It is not mandatory that an organization may set and compulsorily achieve those objectives. However, as an auditor you must review if the organization has set OHS objectives after due deliberation and if they made efforts to achieve those objectives. Similarly, if they have not achieved the objectives 
have they identified the root cause of the failure to achieve the OHS objectives and have taken corrective and preventive actions accordingly? The non-conformity shall only be raised if the auditor believes that the organization has not done enough to either achieve the OHS objective or they have not learned any lessons from their failure.